This afternoon, we're diving into the growing presence of autonomous cars here in the Bay Area and the use of them as robo taxis. Several companies are out on the streets right now touting the convenience of this technology. But what about the glitches and concerns about safety? Our Kenny Choi starts our conversation in San Francisco, where there's one spot that Waymo cars seem to have a tough time navigating. Rosemary DeSena has lived in San Francisco's Telegraph neighborhood for decades. We have a main thoroughfare and a lot of small streets that feed into it with a lot of weird directionals, five-way streets and that kind of stuff. She chooses to walk when she can and is acutely aware of her surroundings lately with more robo-taxis passing by. I've just noticed a lot of um, car, you know, driverless cars getting stuck. Brian Culbertson, who was visiting Coit Tower nearby, recorded and posted on X this video of a Waymo getting stuck at the turnaround on Greenwich Street. He declined to be interviewed on camera. Residents know the tight turn at the dead end can present some issues. This turnaround is hard for everybody uh, because they don't know that it's a turnaround. Ahmed Banafa is a professor of engineering at San Jose State. People are using them, uh, and, and that's why you hear a lot more problems, because you discover new scenarios that they never thought about it. Banafa believes each hiccup is a chance for Waymo to improve its product and acknowledge imperfections along the way. The company should be upfront about it and fix it and say, we know what's wrong with this with this, this scenario. We, we fixed it. It's not going to happen again. Please close the Despite the latest bump in the road, Banafa believes SB 915, a bill that would give local governments authority over where robo-taxis can be deployed, would create a nightmare where an autonomous vehicle would be allowed in one city and then stopped at the border of the next city that might not allow AVs. Residents like Eileen Icardi have witnessed stranded Waymos too. I have seen Waymo cars up come in and go at too sharp of an angle and then stop and not know what to do. But she also sees the upside of driverless taxis, like for her daughter-in-law who takes late night trips as a nurse. I didn't have to deal with a driver that I didn't know getting in a foreign car. I just got in, told, said where I was going, and it took me there very smoothly. This pedestrian crossing a street in North Beach shook her head in disbelief as the Waymo rightfully stopped and turned after the path cleared. My modus operandi is to uh, wait for those cars to pass in traffic before I make my moves crossing as a pedestrian. Some are very comfortable with the white robo taxis expanding across the Bay Area. Rosemary DeSena is cautious. Now, Waymo did not respond to our specific questions about the stranded cars. As for that state bill that would let local governments weigh in on robo-taxi operations on their streets, it has passed the Senate floor and will be taken up by the Assembly. Waymo is also under a federal scrutiny. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration launched a probe earlier this month, citing 22 incidents where Waymo cars got into an accident or violated traffic laws. And last Thursday, the agency said it learned of nine more cases, including one in San Francisco, where a Waymo drove the wrong way on a one-way street. The office said it's not aware of any injuries in any of these cases. Waymo says it will continue to work with the federal agency. It said in a statement they currently serve over 50,000 weekly trips in some of the most complex environments, and they are proud of their performance and safety record. They added they are committed to transparency when it comes to safety. And the National Highway Safety Administration has also launched a probe into Amazon robo-taxi company Zooks. Two of those vehicles were rear-ended after suddenly braking in traffic. And the agency is also looking into crews, which had its permits to operate in California pulled. State regulators said crews misled them about an accident where the car hit and dragged a woman who was thrown into its path by another car. Still ahead, we talk live with a Bay Area professor of transportation and innovation about the benefits and the drawbacks of these robo taxis. Plus, Waymo planning to expand south in the Bay Area, why some lawmakers are pushing to pump the brakes.
This half hour, we're exploring the growing presence of driverless cars here in the Bay Area. And for the past few months, people have been calling rides from Google's autonomous car company Waymo here in San Francisco through the app. Now the company plans to test rides on the peninsula. At first, only Waymo employees could ride as far south as San Mateo with plans to expand to Sunnyvale, but the company is running into a little resistance. As our Kenny Choi reports, some critics say the expansion is just happening too fast. When a driverless car struts by and catches eyes, people stop and stare. Rick Gepilano has noticed too. He's always looking for the next best mode of transportation. Whatever makes it easier is critical when that commute is every day. I work two jobs. I'm able to rest in between riding the bus. He rides the bus, uses an e-scooter and a ride hailing service if the weather gets nasty. Lately, the San Francisco native has been using Waymo occasionally for more reasons than just one. I don't have to deal with drivers that are that have bad attitude because it's driverless, you know. With Waymo expanding to the peninsula for the first time, Rick believes it could become part of his regular commute to San Bruno if the ride fare makes economic sense. I jumped into one to Start take it ride. for a ride. Hello from Waymo. And see what the hype is all about. A few minutes in, by chance, on our way to the destination I punched in, we approached a construction zone. He's giving a slow sign. It slowed down, navigated the cones, and came out the other end without a hitch. Ahmed Banafa is a professor of engineering at San Jose State. The future is driverless. All of us knows that. It's a matter of when. And also a matter of who. Who will gain dominance in a driverless world? So it's a very tight rope that they are walking. Gain the trust, gain the, the market share before Tesla comes into play, before crews come back. Thanks. But it's not full throttle forward for Waymo just yet, as lawmakers, unions, and first responders have been critical, questioning its safety among other concerns. San Mateo County Supervisor David Canapa opposes Waymo's expansion. He wants more data and transparency related to any safety issues near crashes and more. We need to put guardrails, and that means Waymo has to communicate uh, with police chiefs, fire chiefs. Um, they have to communicate with Department of Public Works. Once, once you gain this trust and people are used to it and not afraid of seeing it on their, uh, you know, on their roads, on their streets, then it's gonna the, the human driver will disappear. In that case, it's gonna be really an autonomous, driverless cars. That's part of the conundrum for Rick Gepilano. What could make his commute easier and cheaper one day could come at a cost. I could see like Uber drivers and Lyft drivers losing their jobs because you have automated cars that are moving out there. Just like that, the driver is out of sight. When we asked the company for a timeline to all this, Waymo didn't give us an answer, but simply said that the expansion will take some time. The company told us they will work closely with cities and first responders to ensure that they are offering rides that are safe and accessible. And still ahead, a plan to use robo-taxis as transit, the major project in the works in Contra Costa County. And we are counting down to the Oakland Ballers' first home game at Raimondi Park. It's Tuesday, June 4th. And remember, you can catch the Ballers on Friday nights on PIX Plus 44 Cable 12. The first televised game is a week from Friday, June 7th at 6.30. Well, this half, half hour, we're talking robo-taxis and safety. Joining me now is Billy Riggs, a professor of transportation and innovation at the University of San Francisco. Thanks so much for being yeah, here. Thanks for having me. All right, let's get to it. Is there really anything stopping Waymo? I mean, money, public acceptance, is it full steam ahead? <laughs> I think it's full full speed ahead for, mm -hmm. for Waymo. I mean, I think they're they're well capitalized. They've got great technology, and um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for them to really prove that you know automation and safe driving has a future, not only in San Francisco but way beyond. Now, is it essentially in the, in the terms of the race to who's going to end up on top of all this? It's really Waymo's to lose, right? Cruise is out, Zooks and Am uh, which is essentially Amazon is slow going. Same as same with Tesla. You know, does Waymo? They're kind of at the top right now, right? Well, I think uh, Waymo's done a really good job of, of I think, uh, winning over public opinion mm -hmm. and. Um, 
You know, Waymo's been at this a long time, longer than any other company, uh, backed originally by Google, uh, Alphabet, and spun off. So uh, they've got the history, but you know, I, I think I think we can't count out Cruise. I think Cruise has great technology. Um, they still have over a billion dollars in cash. So, you know, I think, but it, really Waymo has uh, an edge now because of their ability to charge for rides. And, um, you know, we estimate there's still, you know, 10 million rides um, 10 million miles done and probably adding a, on about 150,000 miles daily. So that, that, that driver is getting better and better and better. Yeah. And if you're not out on the roads driving, um, your algorithm isn't improving. And, you know, so that's I think that's a huge advantage for them. Yeah, they have to be on the streets to really yeah. perfect it, right? Well, let's talk about public perception a little bit. I mean, we know the data is there that these driverless cars are, in fact, safer <laughs> than the ride sharing companies like Uber. But yet people are still really nervous about this. They don't trust these driverless cars. Do you think that's going to change? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I was thinking about this quite a bit before, a while coming in here today. And I think there's there's the media depiction and mm -hmm. there's the reality of a public acceptance. I think there's what what happened we have here is there's a, there's a lot of um, media that, that gets churned up when we have instances. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Waymo's had about 22 reportable instances. And when we think about 22 instances over 10 million miles, it's actually far fewer than than we have from from our public transit mm -hmm. agencies, from human drivers throughout our cities. And it's interesting that we have such a reaction and I think it's just the novelty. I, I think when we consider that every day in San Francisco and many cities around the country, there are millions of trips and there's literally 1.1 million trips in San Francisco every day. 50,000 of them are done by Waymo a week. So, okay, so it's, it's, it's less than 1% of, of, our, of our travel on our roads right now. So I think the bigger question we should be asking from a safety standpoint is public perception is hit and miss based on whether or not you have, you've ridden in the vehicles, what your, what your perspective on it and your interpretation of their driving. But the fact is they are performing perhaps better than, than you and I. And I, I, I like to ask forgiveness for my driving many times. <laughs> because, but I do, you know, having ridden in the cars, having studied them, I know that there are many times that I shouldn't be behind the, be behind the wheel. And there are many times I don't want to be behind the wheel. And I think that's a, when we think about the evolution of this technology, the bigger question we might be asking is how do we, how can we get a lot of the unsafe driving behavior that is, that is happening by humans that don't learn the lessons in difficult situations? How do we get that off the roadways? And I think some city is gonna be really radical and say, hey, certain portions of our city maybe need to be autonomous only. Mm. And, and I don't know that's gonna be San Francisco, yeah. but um, you know, it very well could be a city like Oslo, which is like really wants this technology mm -hmm. to come to it basically yesterday. Yeah. You know, I want to step back and talk about autonomous vehicles on a whole. I mean, Mercedes-Benz was the first to come out with this level three autonomous car, which essentially means the driver can sit there, not touch the gas pedal, not look at the road, play their video games, enjoy the scenery. Do you think that autonomous personal vehicles are going to be take off faster than these robo taxis. Well, we should do a little PSA right now. In a level okay. three vehicle, you should not be playing video games. <laughs> um, and, and in well, your Tesla yes. self-driving vehicle, I think that you know, that you're know you legally required to be the, mm -hmm. the pilot in command in that, video, that yes. vehicle. So um, do I think level three technology is evolved enough to where uh, we can, we'll see it kind of dominate the private vehicle market? Mm -hmm. I think the simple answer is no. Um, the, the technology there can only advance as far as the hardware on the vehicles. And the differentiating factor for Cruise, Waymo, Zooks, um, the leading companies in this area is that the hardware on the vehicle is really sophisticated mm -hmm. in being able to anticipate um, errors on the road, but also being able to judge things that right now we can't do with just cameras. And particularly mm -hmm. one of those things, the LIDAR on many of these vehicles is able to judge speed in, in space mm -hmm. and velocity of things around it and make path planning decisions in a much more sophisticated way. So I think for freeway driving, yeah, this is a great asset for, for, 
for Mercedes. Mm -hmm. um, will it translate to vehicle sales? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's um, also but, expensive. But I think, you know, we should do everything we can to encourage driver safety. I'm so happy to see all the, the passenger safety, driver mm -hmm. safety things coming up in Teslas, in BMW, in Mercedes. Across the board, that's a that's a that's a win for society. Will it supplant the sophistication of, of level four vehicles we see on the streets mm -hmm. of San Francisco? I don't think so, just because of the expense yeah. of the hardware needed to right. do that level four operation. Yeah, we have to see, see we, we, where we are in five years. Yeah. It's really fascinating. <laughs> totally. Philly, thanks so much for it being here. It is really here. a pleasure. Thank you. Well, we've seen self-driving cars in, on, in action on city streets, but now there's also a plan to bring them to the stretch of the suburbs. In Contra Costa County, there's a new transit experiment. It's a network of robo-taxis called glide cars. They are autonomous rolling pods that can fit four people in a pod. Eventually, the plan is to run them on a 28 mile long enclosed roadway stretching from Brentwood through Oakley and Antioch and then ending in Pittsburgh. The plan to have 56 pickup points and riders would summon individual cars using an app. And because the cars are only about five feet wide, the travel route can run alongside trails, railroad tracks and streets without removing any existing lanes. The routes are designed to get people to and from major points of interest like downtown areas, commercial centers, and other transit systems. We'll be right back. Well, thank you so much for joining us for today's conversation on driverless car safety. We'd love to hear what you think. Post your thoughts online using the hashtag KPIX. CBS Evening News is next. I'll see you at 5. Hey, thanks for watching. In order to enjoy more videos like this, please like and click the link below, lower left. Click it, bang it, smash it to subscribe.